Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Tuesday, November the 2nd. We're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God today. And the Apostle Paul comes along and is writing to the church at Galatia, or the church is at Galatia. And he had the privilege of being able to be there in that place and preach the gospel. And many responded to the gospel uh, and they had committed their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they were beginning to walk away from that religious, uh, oppressive system of Judaism, um, the works-based salvation. He called them to the gospel and Christ alone and, and faith alone, and then how that then would work out through their lives. They didn't work to be saved. They worked out of salvation, and uh, it was because of the work of the Holy Spirit that they would be become the image of Christ, uh, God's dear Son, that they would uh, be transformed, renewed, and sanctified, and then through that, their love and their uh, and their affection for the Lord Jesus and His Word and the truth uh, then would work out in their lives. But as He comes along uh, to this wonderful church that uh, that uh, had such a great beginning, as we do know, just like today. There will be those that will try to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're seeing that all over the place right now, uh, not only here in America, but all around the world. Uh, we have false teachers that are perverting the gospel. And so he comes along in verse 6 and says these words, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that has called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And so he says, there's some that's coming along and they're teaching and preaching things uh, that, that they don't know what they're talking about and they don't line up with the Bible. They don't line up with the truth of what Christ has proclaimed and what Christ has revealed to us through the Holy Spirit to write down to you so that you'll know what to follow. We don't have to worry about, am, I'll ha am I hearing truth? Uh, from these men who stand in positions of prominence, you can come to the Word of God and know for yourself. But I hear people all the time, not only from the pulpit, but also from the pew, who pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. They pervert the truth of the Word of God. And they say, well, I know this, or I know that. But then you say, but does that line up with the Bible? Does that line up with the Word of God? And most of the time, uh, the things in which they speak don't line up with the truth of Scripture. So you got to be careful, no matter who they are, whether they're from the pulpit or the pew, who you allow to speak into your life, because there are some, as he says, listen to it again, he said, there are some that will trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But now listen to what the Apostle Paul comes along and encourages these believers to do. And I pray this is a, an encouragement for you as well as it is for me. And he says, but though we, <laughs> or an angel from heaven, he says, if, we, if you hear us, contradicting what we've already said, then turn away from it. If you have a vision or an encounter with an angel, don't forget that there are evil spirits that lead you away from God, not to God. There are good spirits and there are evil spirits, and certainly you better understand these things. And there are fallen angels, that's demons, that's what these things are. Uh, when he says these words, though an angel from heaven, and we certainly know this, preach any other gospel unto you, and uh, the whole um, religion of Islam was because the prophet Muhammad had saw what he disclaimed as the angel Gabriel uh, and came along and gave him this revelation. And that's how the whole thing got started. And, it, and, and he said in a vision, he seen the angel Gabriel uh, proclaiming these things to him. Well, he could have known that that couldn't have been Gabriel, the angel that declared the Lord Jesus Christ, because it contradicted the very things in which were already spoken. But he believed it hook, line, and sinker, and he ran with it, and he has led hundreds of thousands of millions of men and women astray into a false religion. And so he says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. That is a strong uh, language that's coming from the apostle Paul. That's how serious the gospel of Jesus Christ is. That if anyone comes along and preaches anything else, don't you uh, allow them the privilege and and uh, you 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 separate themselves out from you and and stay as far away from them as you can. For verse ten, he says, "For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? Yet if I please men, I should not be 
a, a servant of Christ. And so he says it comes along with this prosperity gospel. <laughs> Anybody heard of the prosperity gospel? Well, that's a perverted gospel. It preaches something that doesn't uh, happen across the board. And that's why I say if your gospel that you listen to on the TV or you hear on the radio or you listen to it in a pulpit or 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 someone who's sitting in the pew doesn't line up with what it would also be like for someone who doesn't live in America, then it's not a true gospel. But also there are those in other foreign countries that are perverting the gospel in different ways. But certainly today health, wealth, and and prosperity is is the gospel that produ uh, that predominates the culture in which we live that God's going to just come along and give your life to him he's going to make everything glorious and grand everything will be better well that's not a true gospel at all the bible says that we suffer reproach that we are the mocking of of the world uh, man he says if the world hate you know first that it hated me he says, in this life you shall have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world over and over and over and over and over again. The, nowhere in the Bible does God say he's going to remove all the problems that you have here while you're on the earth. <laughs> he does say he's going to remove all the problems that you have here on the earth one day when you make it into the glories of heaven. He does promise that. He does promise that you're going to receive to yourself a reward and an eternal inheritance that will never fade away. He does say that one day you're going to be able to be where there is no more presence uh, penalty or power of sin where there is no more division hate and sorrow and pain and crying and suffering and death there will be no more of those things but it's never going to happen here on this earth uh, until God comes back and sets it all new and so there is a different gospel that's being preached today on many different levels and you can know whether or not the true gospel is being preached to you by lining it up what, by what the word of God says and so in verse 11 he says but I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So he comes along and says, the very things that I'm speaking to you, the very things that I disclose to you, the very things that you are now reading in this letter, they are directly from the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so when you read these words, you're not reading just the handwritings of the Apostle Paul. You're reading the very words of Jesus Christ written to your heart. It says, do not let someone come along and pervert the gospel uh, and, and lead you away. I'm marveled that you have been so soon removed from him uh, in the gospel uh, that's called you into Christ. And so be certain that what you hear and what you're listening to on a regular basis is teaching you to become like Christ. Remember what Christ went through. Did he have an all healthy, wealthy, and blessed life? No, the Bible says he didn't even have a place to lay his head. But he knew that he had a house in heaven that no man could ever take away. He was absolutely satisfied in every situation which he was on the earth. And Paul comes along later and says that, I've learned to be content in whatever situation I am. Philippians 4.13, a verse that everybody loves to preach and everybody loves to hold on to. But it's a false gospel in America. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But what did he say before that? And what's the situation ever that? He says, man, I know how to be hungry or I know how to be full. I know how to be a base or a bound. I know how to be rich or poor. But I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And he's writing this up from a terrible house arrest situation. Not that he's out on some football field or some sports thing and making his dreams come true. No, he was suffering for the name of Jesus Christ. And that's Philippians 4.13. But people are perverting that verse like crazy all over this world to make their dreams come true or whatever ambitions or talents that they want to do, they can go out and do it because Christ is going to give them the strength to do it. No, Christ gives us the strength to do what brings His him the glory. And he will bring good into our lives if we're doing that. But that's not a promise that we will not have to suffer other things as well. And so make sure that what you hear is the true gospel. And I pray today that you go forth mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray that you are encouraged in the true gospel of Christ.